show it if you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. Jesus and Peter the Disciple It's written in the Bible about a man named Peter. He was actually a common fisherman, but something special happened to him because he met Jesus. Jesus, he was the children's best friend. They loved to be near him. He was brave and he dared to say what was right, even if very important people disagreed with him. Peter was not like that. He could get scared. Scared of what other people thought about him. He wanted to be the way Jesus was, but he didn't quite believe that it was really possible. But when Peter saw what Jesus did, he began to believe. Maybe you've heard about the time Peter and some others went out fishing. They had been fishing the whole night, but hadn't caught a single fish. They were pretty tired and worn out. When they got back to land, Jesus was there. He told them to go back out to deep water and cast out their nets again. The disciples weren't convinced that it would help. They had already been fishing in the whole area, but they chose to do it because Jesus had said to. And guess what happened? The nets filled up with fish, as full as they could be. Jesus probably wanted to show Peter and the others that they could always believe in him. After this, they chose to follow along with Jesus as his disciples. The disciples were very happy to be together with Jesus. Peter thought that nothing bad should ever happen to Jesus. He was so fond of him and always wanted to be where Jesus was. He was his best friend. One evening, Jesus said something strange to Peter. 
Jesus said that pretty soon, Peter was going to pretend that he didn't know Jesus. Not just one time, but three times. And after that, a rooster would crow. Peter didn't understand that at all. Why would he pretend that he didn't know his best friend? No, I'm not going to do that, is probably what Peter thought. Then something sad happened. They took Jesus away. Think that someone could hate Jesus. They wanted him to die. Peter got very scared. He followed after these people, but kept a little distance. He was scared that he would be taken prisoner too, if they understood that he knew Jesus. All of a sudden, someone recognized Peter and asked him, Aren't you one of Jesus' disciples? Peter answered a little nervously, N No, I don't know him. Some more people walked toward him, and one said, I have seen you together with Jesus. But Peter answered again, I promise you, I don't know that person. Then Peter was asked the same thing a third time, and he answered for the third time, You're wrong. I don't know him. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had told him. He was ashamed. How could he let Jesus down? He hadn't managed to be brave for his best friend. Peter thought for sure that Jesus was going to be very sad when he saw him, that Jesus would be disappointed and maybe angry. But Jesus looked at Peter with hope. He didn't get upset or disappointed. He already knew beforehand that Peter was going to pretend that he didn't know him three times. That's because he knows that even though we try as hard as we can to do the good, we don't always manage it all the way. Jesus also knew that Peter would become a much braver man very soon, because Jesus had a plan to help people. First, Jesus had to die on the cross. Three days later, he rose up from the grave. And after a little while, he went up to heaven. And then something very important happened. Jesus sent something back down to the earth something that can help us. What he sent was his own spirit, the Holy Spirit. Jesus knew that Peter was going to become a completely new man when he received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a great power, a power which shows us what is right and wrong and helps us to be able to choose the good. When Peter got this spirit inside him, he became a very brave man. And Jesus wants to help us too. He loves us exactly as we are, even though we haven't always managed to do the good. He knows it can be hard, but if we want to do the good, then he will help us.
what have we learned in our experiences in the word of God. Hallelujah. Let me start with Hal. Yes, Paul. What did you learn from the whole thing? next time. Yeah, of course. Because if they don't have something, then doesn't mean they will not have it again. Maybe that day, dad has the budget for something and then you're bringing in your budget. Is that for what? Okay. But let, let's do this. Here, we're talking about Jesus sending them back to get more fridge because the whole night they were struggling. So, this shows us that in life, if you have Jesus, if you have Jesus, Somehow, somewhere, things get better. They might not go the way you want, because for them, they know that if it doesn't, the fish doesn't come in the morning, in the, in the evening time, maybe they will go overnight, then they will catch more. Because most of the fishermen, they do fishing in the night. So for them, they did the all night, and nothing came. But when you have Christ, there are some uh, kind of like a, uh, way and it's kind of like beautiful with Jesus because you will not have to do all the struggling that you have to struggle the other way if he's directing you you will have to be patient number one then you will have to be obedient okay like they obeyed and then they went and they fished hallelujah so if Jesus comes in your life things get better the evil one. Yeah, of course. If you welcome, you will be evil and you will share. Most of the people who share, they share with bad intentions. If they are evil in the spirit, in their spirit. Okay. So, yes. Mm -hmm. What have you learned? I've learned that when God comes to someone, when God, like, told Peter that he's going to say, he doesn't know God, two times a year, the cruel world. Peter's opinion, he, he stated that he, he 
that they come or that they came. That they came. Mm. He, he, he is the I promise I will not love him. Yeah. Mm. So basically, he just gives us a sense that we can try to be good, mm. but it doesn't always come the way because we dash it to skin and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, you're right. So they did saying that most of the time he is like calling to Peter when he denies Jesus and then he always even promised God, uh, Jesus, that he will not betray him. But Jesus himself being God knew that he will betray him, right? But that means for her, they day is saying that sometimes we would want to do good as children. We always want to do good to our parents, but sometimes we become disobedient. We become stubborn. Sometimes we become so terrible at home, you know. But that doesn't mean that it's the end. You can't change. Yeah, like in the movie we saw that Jesus, when he came in the life of those uh, disciples, he really made a change in him. However, they were still having fear. One thing that made that Peter really even have those temptations that he had fear. So when you're believing in Jesus Christ, when you choose to follow Jesus Christ as a, as a young person, hmm? as a young girl, a young boy, if you say that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, I'll follow him all the days of my life, we should not have a doubt. Because if you read the Bible very well, that Peter had fear and doubt somehow because it would be like, Fear, 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 fear. How so fear. How they think, like, how they think about them. Mm -hmm. How would they say? How would they talk about them with Jesus or that? You know, even when he said denied him, still it was fear because he was in terror that maybe they will come for him, right? Mm -hmm. So after that, you see that we don't have to have fear when we choose to go with Christ. The Bible says that God did not give us the spirit of fear. But he gave us the spirit of God. boldness. And, yeah. So in that, we have to be bold and strong for Christ when we follow Christ. You understand? So if you understand another thing I would say, I've learned, is that we should not be shameful of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because all the things that Jesus did, how he went on healing the sick and their faith was ignited, the sick and he, their faith was ignited. You know, at least you cling on that that I'm with the might person, has the strength in the world. He can do anything at any time, right? So if we are to follow Christ as young children, we should not be ashamed of Christ. You think? Yeah. So, even in friends, you tell them, me, I'm a child of God. Me, I'm a born again Christian. I believe Christ Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. We should be proud of that. Because God has saved us so much, right? Yeah. What did he save you about? Well, Anything? He saved me of like, like one thing. He saved me of injured myself. I got a table on my neck. Really? Well, it's a protection of God, this time. Yeah. What did God really do for you, Grace? Well, I think that's the same thing. Because I know Okay, let me give you another, what I would say, a special gift, a special thing that God gave us. It's ourselves. The life we have. Yes. The life we have, the matter of the fact that we are existing, so we should trust our God, right? We should surrender to Him, right? He gave us how to Uh-huh. He gave you eyes. Some people are blind. Also how to some people are they, you know. Some people are lame. Some people have You see, some people are 
are just great blessings. But you can keep around and see you jumping, jumping around and playing around. Sometimes people with boys play. Sometimes people with boys play. So we should thank God for all that God has done so much that we should trust our lives with Him. We should not be ashamed of God. Yeah? We should yeah. not. Especially to his son Jesus Christ. Because some people say, Yeah, me, I believe in God, but I don't believe in Jesus Christ. What is that? Jesus Christ is our Savior. You see how he came in the lives of these guys and made it a wonder? How he went on healing the sick? Who wouldn't want to have someone like Jesus in life? As even we grow up more and more and more. Jesus was the one who um, was the one who made us. Mm -hmm. Bible says he's the firstborn from all brothers. If you are a Christian, you are a brother or say brother or sister to Jesus. So he calls us even his co heirs So if we live according to his line. Uh -huh. And we will go and in heaven and we will rejoice with him and more blessings and oh okay. my god, I'm waiting but for that. But if you go to um, not heaven and you go to Satan, you will be a bully. Not even just a bully. You're going to hell rather than God. Yeah. Hell, every day you're dying. So you should be with no food yeah, water. Jesus. Because when you get drink, according to the way we see Peter in the last part of the movie, hmm? after that he thought that Jesus will be angry at him after betraying him, all that. But no, he told him have hope. So that means every time we have to correct our mistakes regarding to the word of God, and then we we start over again, right? Just get that in your mind as you grow up. Every time, like you say, life is not always the way we want to do, right? But God, Jesus himself is there to guide us. So, if you are walking with Christ, hmm, something special coming to you. The moment you say that he's your Lord and Savior, something beautiful happens to you. And that should not just beautiful, special, amazing. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Okay, fast. Yeah. I, well, I love that. So all in all, we walk with Jesus, we win. Peter in the end was able to preach the gospel. Because if if we fall and uh, Christ says, please have hope, start over again. And new mercies every morning. That's what the Bible says. So, Jesus is always there to lead us through. I know. Yeah. Now we'll come to the biggest, beautiful part of it. The Holy Spirit. Huh? Who knows the Holy Spirit? Uh, we don't. It's the Spirit of God. It's the Holy Spirit of God. And God. Who can tell me what it's? Uganda, going back in Germany when you are here. In New York. <laughs> going in New York, maybe playing outside with the friends when you're sleeping, like in a dream. Yeah. You see yourself playing, but your body is here. That is the spirit. Spirit portraying you. Uh -huh. Not portraying you, that is you yourself. But so the uh, spirit is you. Yes, so your spirit, you assuring yourself, you. This is the body. Yeah. 
what is this side of you? There is the spirit, the body, and the soul. Yeah. Inside of you, there is. Uh, yeah, I want you to get this right, okay? Yeah. When you sleep, that's why we pray when we're going to sleep. For body's protection. You understand? But good dreams. If, yeah. Um, Hey, give us good dreams, no bad dreams. If you have bad dreams, I mean, you say that it's controlled. No, no it's not, not actually controlled. It's just like if you have a bad dream, mm -hmm. it's more like God is giving you, like, um, and he's putting your attention to the bad thing that you're going to Yeah, that you should that's pray. Right. Wow, that's so perfect. Wow. Wait, I'm like that. Yeah. Oh, wow, your mom is doing a good job. She does an applause. So, when you sleep, that dream, the person you see in the dream going, rotating around, playing with friends, you. enjoying, that is your spirit. Yeah. That's why when you get a bad dream, you wake up panting. Same. Okay. So it's in the spirit, that is in you. So that's why it is affecting the body. And also when you get a bad dream, you wake up screaming. Yeah. So the spirit of God is inside the beautiful thing about the way it's even in time. Yeah. So, where in you, the Spirit of God is controlling, the Spirit of God is powerful. We should always ask God as young children and our parents also should ask, uh, encourage us to love the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the comforter. He's the good one to lead us through. Guide us Closest friend in time of need. What have I said? Counselor, comforter, closest friend in time of need. So we need such a presence in our life. So when Christ left after he died and rose again, he left us the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Our our helper. If you feel you are stressed. If you feel you are not understanding something, go on your knees and say, Holy Spirit, please, I need you to take me through this. Yeah, so um, in the Bible, like, instead of like when you watch the movie, mm -hmm. like if you watch the movie to the solid end, mm -hmm. this is where the Bible says, it says that like, if you see, if you read the Bible according to the scriptures, and you went into more like two more like two more stations like after one and then another. Mm. Yeah, then you will see that I that's where it confused me a lot. No. Because because like where it confuses me and then now I got to understand is when he was put on the cross. Mm -hmm. And then he prayed he prayed to himself which is God like um forgive them. He was telling the father. We have three personalities in God. Yeah. So we have God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. About the When you um like watch a scary movie, mm -hmm. sometimes you're scared. Yes, yeah, so you scared to the Hey, I'm scared. Then what I'll encourage you is that don't watch bad movies. They're hey. contemplating your brain. Your spirit. But what I'll say, if you watch a bad movie and then you go to sleep and then you get scared of sleep and you're like, all your heart is like this, maybe anything that hits the door, you're like, ah, I'm going to get you. Yeah, so don't watch such movies. Don't. Unless you're able to handle it. Don't. So after all in all, let everything be beautiful. So you have to watch everything that is beneficial to you. Sorry for that short break. You have to watch something that is beneficial to you. Like cartoon. Cartoon is nice, but which kind of cartoon? Like Christian kind of cartoon. Something you're interested in that's like Christian version. No, okay, it's kind of be something.
some mall of the time Christian version, but also the funny ones. Yeah. But not those ones that are killing themselves. Yeah. You should learn to, to monitor your mind what you feed it. As young children, you should monitor. Yes. Because these movies are not that helping those ones. But the funny ones you can laugh, enjoy. Then the Christian movies you are learning the word of God slowly by slowly. Because throughout our journey as Christians, it's gonna be the word of God. So we need to know the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. I recommend home alone. Ah, want. Okay. I want to be a home home alone, but you just want to be young. Yeah, that will be your time when you're grown up. Excuse me. No. Yeah, that's it. She left home alone. It's well. You're there to take care of her. And what they do? Oh my God. Your eldest sister has to take care of you. Yes. And when she tells you something, you do it. But she loves the commander. Okay. So we thank God for this session and we bless you. We've had a really nice session. And I'll just say that everything is exploded. Dave came in, in the house. We have another brother. It's called Dave. And he's so lovely and actually, oh my God. Dave, hi. Yes, that is our dev in the background. <laughs> we bless God, we glorify Him. One last thing I'll leave us. I'll leave you an assignment. I want you to go ask mommy, ask daddy. Ask the dad. What is the Holy Spirit? Next Sunday, I will love it so lovely to hear from you guys. Yes. I don't know, I'm very nervous. Uh -huh. I don't so, know what to do. It's okay, but you can just ask mommy, what is the Holy Spirit? But I have work to do, but I'm not in That's it. like a vertical flip, like a top. Guys, this is serious. I'm serious with you. Seriously. Seriously? Let's go learn about the Holy Spirit throughout the week till next Sunday, right? I'm very serious with you. Yes. So, because you are like, I have a lot of things to do. In the whole week, you will not have only one hour and learn about the Holy Spirit. I have two hours. To do. Mm -hmm. then, I don't have anything to do though. Hey, that then why are you saying you're going to be busy? You're going to be busy. You lied to me, huh? Got you, got you. No, because like, I'm going to be busy. Because like, I'm going to be busy. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Round it up. We give God the glory. Thank you, our viewers. This has been a friendly and lovely Sunday school this afternoon time. We love you and we bless God for your tuning in. We hope you've learned something. As a child of God, when you walk with Christ, something special happens to you. You are not alone. Things may not go the way life wants it. Maybe you want something and daddy has done a it. Doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. But all in all, if you are with Christ, He will teach you patience, He will mm, correct your mistakes, and then you will be even able to be obedient to our parents, and even we will be able to be good at school. We don't bully people at school, we don't kill people at school, we don't fight. When you are with Christ, the heart is touched and the holy body is changed. Hallelujah. The heart is touched and the whole body is changed. Hallelujah. So we thank you for your time and your tuning in in Turning Point Ministries International, the Sunday School Service for the children. Guys, really? Okay. So we bless God and we give him the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Amen. So, we're going to wind up with the song. And also, we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Yeah. And it says, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God, friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Father, thank you.
thank you for you are our best, best, best pastor we have in our life. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the breath of life, my father. And thank you that we are still alive and kicking, even in this coronavirus thing, my father. We are not being taken. We are not being sick. You have protected us, supplied all our needs, and you have encouraged us. Hallelujah. Father, as we go, let's know that you are our best friend. You are our best thing, my father. That if we have you, my God, we have all that can take us through this life until we meet you face to face, Father, for eternity. We bless our children, we bless our parents, my Father, and let you do your will in every child that is watching us, every parent that is set up part time to watching us. May you surprise them and bless them abundantly as parents, that they will. We will give them the grace to go on as parenting and as nurturing the children until they are fully grown as men and women. We give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. This has been Jacqueline and Jacqueline, you can call me so. We love you. We bless you as Turning Point Ministries International. Greetings from our apostle Chris Gaba. We are best here in Dubai. May you be blessed, be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. And we have a branch also in Abu Dhabi. That's where also we can have our fellowship. So when church opens up, you are all welcome to Turning Point International, Ministries International. May God bless you. May you stay blessed and love the Lord. So may God love you for us in Jesus' name. Amen.